Hey guys, it's Fletch with the Big Sky Tactical Channel. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about some things that you can do to harden your home defenses. The, all of the things that I'm going to show you are things that are really pretty easy to do. Uh, not a lot of investment, most of them. And, uh, you know, just some simple common sense things that you can do based on, you know, my experiences uh, having been in law enforcement and working in the trades, so to speak. And so <clears throat> I just wanted to share those with you. And some of the things I want to be sharing with you um, are more tailored towards if there's a breakdown in, so breakdown in society. Or SHTF, you know, the defecation hits the oscillation, so to speak. And, or RAL, without rule of law or without ordinary life, however you want to look at that. So um, there's a couple of things that I just want to talk to you about in theory, and then I'll show you some hands-on things that you can actually do. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is your door security. The best door that you can get is a metal door, an insulated metal door. And the reason why is because the locks on here, uh, if you can get the door to break away around these locks, uh, say like, you know, with the cold gauge slug, or they actually have what are called breaching rounds that people can use that are specifically meant to blow these locks out. Well, if these locks are you know, good locks that are in, in, you know, properly seated into a metal door, it makes that job a lot harder. Secondly, um, if you have the money, and not everyone does, uh, I certainly don't, but I want to add this out there anyways. If you have the money, you can also get a metal framed door. And later, I'm going to show you guys how to beef up the strike plate and the deadbolts on your doors. But if you have a metal framed door, uh, it just makes that whole process even that much better because it's impossible to uh, pretty much to kick in the door because the your deadbolt here you can see when we throw it open sticks out a little ways well if that is up against metal and that metal is screwed into the 2x4 behind the wall it's going to be really hard to get that door open so again metal insulated door and if you can afford it you can get them also in a metal frame you will probably have to special order them but you can definitely find them if you go to lowe's or um uh i can't think of the other big store off the top of my head but they may not know what you're talking about you may be better off going to a builder supply store where contractors actually go to and I know for a fact that you can order them that way. There are manufacturers that make them. So there's the first idea. Second idea, let's say you have one of these really nice glass inlays. Well, that's not going to be very secure, is it? Because obviously all you have to do is just, you know, kick that glass in, reach in, and unlock the door. So what you want to do is... I would recommend a very easy and low cost solution to fix that is to have a sheet of three quarter inch OSB plywood. OSB as an Oscar Sam Bravo. OSB plywood. That plywood has a very high tensile strength and it's also extremely hard to burn uh, so it's very strong. What you would want to do is you would want to you know, pre-cut it out so that you can screw that in around the door so that glass is covered. So even if the glass gets broken from the outside, they can't get in. Which brings up another you know, topic of discussion that you know, it's a decision that you'll have to make for yourself. You know, which is more important? Is it more important that my glass doesn't get broken you know, uh, or my safety? And you know, for me, even that's still something that's kind of hard, you know, to figure out which is more important because, you know, if it's not a prolonged thing, you know, it, if you put the boards on the outside of the house, it, it could protect some of your windows from getting broken. But when you screw them in, well, obviously you've got the screw on the outside. So then all someone would have to do is take the screw out. 
So you know, there's kind of a give and take there, and you'll have to decide what's more, what's more important to you and your family. Um, so again, any glass around the door, obviously you're going to need to to address that if things ever get that bad. Secondly, if you have a side light which goes beside your door, you're going to need to do the same thing. Uh, just cut a strip of OSB plywood <coughs> and have it available. Now, something else that you could do uh, if you're like me and uh, you have a big family or you just have to be frugal, uh, what you could do is you could just take all of the measurements from your doors and keep them in a spiral notebook or something like that. Then go to the store and buy three quarter inch sheets of OSB plywood. And you know, half inch might might do the job, but you know, the way I like that, I'd rather do a little bit overkill. And typically there's not a huge difference between three quarter inch and half inch. Uh, typically three quarter inch OSB is gonna get used quite a bit because that's subflooring material, typically. So um, anyways, going back to the spiral notebook, just go around your house and measure all of those openings and then buy enough plywood. Then, you know, keep the plywood in your garage and go ahead and scribe out all of your cut marks on the wood and, you know, then, you know, God forbid, something did happen, all you would have to do is go out and cut them out. Or if you don't care about not being able to later sell that wood to someone else or return it to the store, whatever, or you know, just drive up to a home builder site and say, hey, you know, I got 10 sheets of OSB plywood, do you want to buy them? Most guys are going to say, yeah, especially you know, if you're going to sell them for a good price. So by not cutting it ahead of time, it's a way to kind of hedge your bet. But obviously, you've got to have the time and possibly electricity to cut them out. So you're going to need to be able to weigh that back and forth as well. Uh, if money's not an object, I would go ahead and cut them out ahead of time. And when you screw them in, you're going to want to use something like this. And I'll show you guys this later as well. This is a framing grade screw. This is a very strong screw. Uh, it's supposed to have you know, about the same ten tensile strength as a 16 penny framing nail. Uh, which is typically, you know, what home builders use that shoots out of their uh, pneumatic air guns to build houses. <clears throat> but you would want to use something like this. Then you would want to, while you're at the hardware store buying these, you're going to want to buy some washers. That, and what I would suggest is, you know, about an inch to inch and a half. However, you can get so that the inside of it is small enough that the head of this screw won't loop over it so that when you screw this in this pushes the washer flat against your door, your wall, whatever and <clears throat> so again you're going to want good high quality screws like this and then washers that you know have a circumference inch to an inch and a half around it but the hole in the middle is small enough that the head won't pass through it easily and what that'll do is that'll keep someone, if they're beating on the piece of plywood that's out there, if all you have is the head of the screw, all they've got to do is get the wood to strip out past the head of the screw. If you've got the washer on there, well now, you know, they've got this to deal with. So it just makes it that much more effective. So, and the last idea that I wanted to give you guys is a KD bar is one of the absolute cheapest and, in my opinion, one of the most foolproof things that you can do to make your door pretty much foolproof. And okay, so guys, so need a KD bar is the that's an old term saying it's how you know back in the fort days and the settlers days and things like that. It's what they actually used to lock their doors. And so I wanted to share with you how you would use a product like that. Unfortunately, I don't have one here to actually show you but I can walk you through the gist of it, so to speak. Basically what you would need to do is, first thing that you would want to do is you would want to take off the trimming, these trim boards from both sides. And so you would want to have, you know, a small six or eight inch pry bar and you can pop these off. And typically these are really quite easy to get off. They're set in there with some small trim screws. 
and so you could just get them, you know, just pop right off. The reason why you'd want to do that is twofold. First, there's a gap in between the edge of the door and the wall and where this trim board sticks out. You don't want any movement on that door at all. The less movement the door has, the harder it's going to be for someone to kick that okay, door. Okay guys, so here's what I'm talking about. When I said when you're using a Katie Bar door, you're going to want to take this trim board off. You see how that sticks out further? And the reason why is because if someone is trying to kick this door in and they get that to break, you're going to have that half inch to an inch where that door is going to start moving. And whenever you can get the door to start moving, then you can start breaking down whatever's holding it in place. So when I say that you're going to want to remove that trim board, that's why. Because you want when those 2x4s go in to those um, metal braces, you want them in there taut and you want them flat up against that door as tight as they can be. So there's absolutely no movement in that door whatsoever. So uh, I was thought someone might have a question about that and want to know what I was talking about so that's it right there and obviously you want to have it somewhere around you know either right above your deadbolt or down below your your door lock something like that somewhere near here so that you're reinforcing these locks that are already here doing a job for you as well so there you go the second thing you're going to gain by taking this off <coughs> And you know, of course, save the board. You can put it back up later, hopefully. But the second thing you want to gain from that is you'll actually be able to see the studs behind the wall that you're going to want to screw into. So what a candy bar typically is, is it looks something like this. And what, it, what you do is you mount it on either side of your door, kind of like this. Well, obviously it wouldn't be here. I'm trying to stay in frame of the camera. But you would screw it up against the door like this. Then you would take two by fours and you would place them in there like this and you know to get the best results you know you'd have to see you know how wide is your space that you have available to fill it up fill up obviously everything that you have and the ones that I've seen a lot of times are typically they're either an inch and a half or three inches because that's either one or two two by fours uh, either um, screwed together or, or nailed together and you're going to put them on either side of the door and screw them into, or bolt, even would be better, bolt them into the 2x4 behind. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to have, you know, your 2x4 that's going to go in and then you're going to lift it up out of there. So lock the door, you put it in, just pull the bars out. And that's going to make that door extremely, extremely difficult to get into. Now, obviously, that's not something you're going to want to do on an everyday basis. That's not what I'm saying. And, you know, I'm definitely not saying that I expect the worst to happen either. You know, my point of view is that, you know, you expect the best, but prepare for the worst. <clears throat> now, also, while we're talking about home security, another thing that you may wish to consider is you may want to also get enough plywood to do your windows. And it would be the same way, you know, on either side of your windows, when you're framing a home, you typically put two 2 by 4s side to side on the edge that frames out the opening. So on either side of your windows, you're going to have like three inches there that you could put those screws with washers on them, like I was telling you. You could put those on all the windows on your house if you wanted to. Uh, and now obviously, you wouldn't want to do that unless it was, you know, a dire, and of course the phone oh, rings again. Sorry about that. Uh, it seems like whenever I decide to shoot videos, the phone rings. So, anyways, uh, your windows. And again, like I said, you're going to need to make a decision. You know, do you want to try to put the boards on the outside to protect your windows for later? You know, is this something that you expect? You know, it could be just a short-term situation, or is this, you know, more of a long-term situation? If it's going to be a long-term situation. If it were me, and I'm not telling you it's what you need to do, I'm just saying if it were me, I would put them on the inside. Because then, even if someone broke, <laughs> like there's now the voicemail that goes off, um, even if you were able to break out the window, let's say, if I've got three quarter inch OSB over that opening and I've got them screwed in with those framing grade screws, washers, screwed into the two by fours on, you know, 
top bottom sides, you're going to have a really difficult time kicking that in. You know, you're probably going to have to take an axe or a sledgehammer or something to get through it. Well, that's going to buy me the time that I need to dispatch you while you're doing that. So, but again, you know, don't expect the worst. You know, don't live in fear. This isn't designed to be fear mongering. This is designed to hopefully give you peace of mind of knowing that. And of course, there's the other phone. Hang on. Don't just love that when people can't get a hold of your cell phone and then they call your home phone. So, <laughs> I apologize for the interruptions, guys. But again, this is not designed to be fear mongering or fear based. This is designed to give you the tools that you need so that um, if you're in a situation to where you have made the decision that you're better off to stay in your house than to bug out if the defecation hits the oscillation, um, you need to be able to secure your home. And so hopefully I'm give, oh, I have been and will continue to give you the tools that you need to know that you can safely do that. So that's what this is designed for. <clears throat> um, so let's see, again, just to recap what we were talking about, metal door, you can also get a metal frame. Uh, if you have glass on your door or beside your doors, the side lights, I would recommend having something to put on them. Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. There's also a uh, window film that you can put on these as well. And um, I'll put a link down below, but I think 3M and a couple of other companies make a window film that you can put on that makes it extremely difficult to break into or shatter the glass. But um, So I'll put the link in for that as well. But again, you know, you'll want to have some wood so that you can cover those up along with a good drill that's got some torque so that you can get in good quality screws with washers around them to hold the boards in place to secure up your, your uh, entrances into your house. And then also, if you decide that you want to, you know, measure all of your windows in your house if you'd like to board up all your windows, especially if like you have a garden level basement where it'd be very easy for someone, you know, to just kick in your window and come in. <coughs> You might want to consider that, and like I was saying earlier, also you know, you may if you want to have the ability to use that wood for something else in the future or sell it. You know, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you like have a generator or something you can generate electricity, so that if you want to cut those boards when you know that you need them, <clears throat> well, one, hopefully it's not too late, and secondly, um, if you'd like to be able to cut them when you need them you're going to need to have electricity, even if you have rechargeable tools, because they're eventually going to wear down and you're going to need to be able to recharge them. So, <clears throat> um, so what, uh, boards for your windows, you know, you need to choose whether you want to do inside or outside. Uh, for me, if it's a prolonged period of time, I would put them on the inside because if they're on the outside, all they have to do is take the screws out and then now they have access. So. Um, and I know there are some specialty screws that you can get, you know, like you see in bathroom stalls and things like that. So that might be another option for you as well. Um, personally, I'd rather have them on the inside so that I have complete control over them. Not only that, but I can take them down and put them back up, um, you know, as the need may arise, so to speak. Well, again, guys, this is Fletch with the Big Sky Tactical uh, channel. I appreciate you joining me today and I know this is a little bit long and drawn out but I wanted to make sure that I was covering everything and not leaving anything out and next we're going to talk about um, door security like I was talking about earlier with your deadbolt and your strike plates and we're also going to look at uh, your garage door and some things that you can do for your garage door that make your garage door a heck of a lot harder to get in through as well. So thanks for joining me today, guys, and God bless. Hey guys, it's Fletch with Big Sky Tactical. <clears throat> you have to forgive me in advance. Uh, been down with the cold for the last week or so, <clears throat> and today I wanted to talk about home security. And so, if I'm sniffling in the background, <clears throat> you'll <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, you'll know why and understand. What you're looking at here is this is what it looks like when someone kicks in a door. <clears throat> and you can see how this piece right here is the trim board. 
that goes alongside the door. And right here is where the deadbolt used to be. There's half of it. Then over here is where the other half. And you can see <clears throat> where that just split right down the middle. And the metal piece that was in there just popped out. And then down here is where the regular locking mechanism is, your strike plate that goes in there. And then right here, you can actually see where it looks like there was one screw that actually went into this 2x4 stud. This right here is the 2x4 stud that's behind there. And so what I'm going to show you how to do today is to try to anyways to make sure that uh, it's as hard as possible for this to happen. Because many of the houses that are built today, guys, um, someone could very easily kick your door in just like what was done here. The only thing holding this in here, you can see this door frame, is like a three quarter inch, probably fur. <clears throat> or depending on what region of the country you're in, sometimes it's hemlock, things like that. But that's basically all that's holding that door in, is that door frame. And then sporadically up and down the door frame, the door frame will be fastened into the stud behind it. But as far as the locking mechanism goes, right here, let me see if I can kind of force this to go back together the way that it was one-handed here. But you can see right there, there's the deadbolt lock. And when that door got kicked, it just split that door frame wide open and that door came flying open. So that's it for now. I just I, I wanted to show you guys that to start out with so you had a better idea of exactly um, what I'm talking about uh, when I start talking about how to change the locks in your home very inexpensively, very easily, so that uh, something like this hopefully will not happen to you. <clears throat> Alright guys, this is Fletch. I uh, wanted to show you a, a normal exterior door might look like. In the previous clip I showed you what it looks like when it gets kicked in. Here is a standard strike plate and in here, if you actually, if you look back in here, you can see where the stud's back in there. It's a lighter color than that oil rubbed bronze strike plate. And then up here is the deadbolt. And you can also see the stud back in there. And that's what you actually want to be screwed into to make sure that these things actually work. So what I'm going to show you is how to make your door secure as possible. The first thing is you want to make sure that you have a steel door. A steel door is much harder to uh, kick in or um, you know, you'll see sometimes if they can use a shotgun and they can just blow out this region the whole door will collapse around it. Well, steel doors don't do that anywhere near as easily as wooden doors do. So steel door is always going to be safer than a wooden door. Unless perhaps maybe you have a... Uh, of course the phone rings. Alright guys, sorry about that, I'm back. <clears throat> um, so anyways, well I was saying, you know, you've got your deadbolt lock and then just your regular doorknob and you've got a strike plate lock on it. Some things that you can do is they have reinforcement kits that you can get that go you know, around your lock set and it's just a, a metal plate that will reinforce this whole area and it will you know, help the door a little bit. But more important than that, guys, is what you've got going on over here on this side. If you remember back to the video, and if you need, go back and look at it. <clears throat> but you know this door jam right here these typically are only like three quarters of an inch to an inch thick and it's typically a softer wood like pine fir, hemlock something like that and so it doesn't take a lot of force in order to kick this door in and like we saw in the other house you remember how it just split right up like that split all the way down 
And <clears throat> because these strike plates weren't screwed into the 2x4 behind them, and it wasn't very strong at all and it just ripped out and you need to check these screws and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second but you need to check these screws and make sure they're long enough and make sure that they're actually screwed into the 2x4 the stud in the wall behind it now something else that I've seen guys watching you know security videos on YouTube is people will tell you well you need to have at least a 3 inch throw or a 4 inch throw or you know whatever in, in order to make it safe guys that's only partially correct because like I showed you before it, it doesn't really make any difference how far that dead bolt goes in unless let's say you know it was a six inch throw and you actually you know ground out part of the 2x4 behind it and it was going into the 2x4 that might give you some extra security but the way that this is set up right now, you know, it's not going to matter whether it's one inch or three inches of throw because if this thing splits out, like we saw with that other one, and this metal plate rips out of the deadbolt, that's all for naught anyways. It doesn't really matter because once this splits, it's all just going to, you know, break open anyways. So let me show you how to do this. <clears throat> Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to need is uh, a drill gun and uh, mine happens to be a Craftsman. Uh, I kind of like Craftsman products. Not that there's, they're the best, but there's not anything out there that's better. Uh, I know people, you know, just for conversation and, you know, getting other people's recommendations, always like to know what tools you're using. Uh, Makita makes good stuff, Ryobi makes decent stuff, DeWalt makes good stuff. And you know, if you don't already have something like this in order to do a project like this, and you're only going to use it twice a year, it probably doesn't make sense to go out and to buy you know a ninety or hundred dollar drill set. You know, save yourself some money. Go to you know uh, Harbor Freight. You know they've got twelve volt and eighteen volt drills there. You can get a lot cheaper. And if it's not something that you're earning your living with, you probably really don't need a professional grade product. However, that being said, I've never ever regretted paying for quality. The quality always stands the test of time, so uh, take that any way that it fits you. So what we're going to do, we're going to take out these screws that are in here. So you'll need uh, a drill and then a bit. And what I have in my drill is just a quick release so that I can change the bits out. And so let's take this screw out and let's see how deep it goes. Alright, so there's the screw and you can see that if we line this up, try to hold it so I'm not blocking what you're seeing there, that is just barely making contact with the 2x4 behind there. And Actually, if I stick it like this, you can see there might be a quarter inch of that screw that's actually in the 2x4 behind it. And you know, this isn't my house, this is a rental house. So uh, I wanted to show you that this, this is the way it came. It, because that's what you know the manufacturer that they bought this door lock set from, this is what they provided, so this is what people use. Well, that quarter inch that screwed into that 2x4 behind there, if someone comes to kick this door in, it's going to split right down the middle and everything's going to go flying. So I'm going to show you how to fix this. One second while I get set up for that. <clears throat> Alright guys, so here's what I recommend. Uh, here in our local mar market, this is called a T25 Gold Star. And that's how they're marketed, that's how they're sold. In every region, in every area, they have a little bit different name. Uh, this is a framing grade screw, which means that it should hold up uh, to the same ten tensile strength and the same amount of abuse, so to speak, as a 16 penny framing nail. And so you know, this is not something that's going to just snap or break. And this is typically something that you would see people use to uh, build decks out of and things like that with uh, synthetic materials. But as you can see, on the end of this, there's like a star design that's in there. And of course, if you're going to use that, then you need a drill bit like this 
that's got that same. And if you go to your local hardware store, you guys, I always recommend, if possible, support your local hardware store. Those guys work really hard, to, you know, to compete with the big, big box stores. And the people in there, in general, know a hell of a lot more than the people in the box stores. And another nice thing about this type of screw, and I'm going to be doing other videos where so I'm going to show you how to use these, but if you look here, this is fluted on there. And what that fluting does is it creates what's called a self-tapping screw which means that it cuts its own hole as it's going in so you don't have to worry about cracking or breaking the wood as it screws in. But <clears throat> again, you can see we're going to have a good, oh, what, inch and a half, two inches that's sticking out there. Now something else that I'll, that I'll tell you guys you need to be real careful of is if you look over here, and let me make sure it's showing in the viewfinder, yep. See my light switch here? You need to make sure that when you're drilling this in that you're not going to drill over into the electrical wires. The electrical wires most always will go up the wall here and so you typically don't need to worry about them going down. They'll most always go up because they'll go up into the attic so that they can run them shorter distances to get where they want to go. So, But this is well below that and it's not going to be over there in the the 2x4 cavity over here. So. I'm just going to put this first one in here. And that'll countersink in there just like the original one did. And show you guys uh, you know, the beauty of the quick release system. I can put the Phillips in, Phillips head in, take the old screw out that in my pocket, put the T25 head in, get another screw, like I said you don't really need to worry about pre-drilling these or anything because that is a self-tapping screw and <clears throat> Now the only way that someone's going to be able to kick this door in, because I'm going to replace it on the strike plate as well, the only way that someone's going to be able to kick this door in is to actually strip this metal plate from around the head of that screw. And <laughs> I can tell you, coming from someone that's been on the other side of the door trying to break the door down, uh, in illegal capacity obviously, that this is your worst nightmare. And so for all you guys out there in the blue and the brown, um, hopefully you understand why I'm teaching people this. Uh, I know that, you know, back when I, you know, wore the blue and the brown, that a lot of people didn't want people to understand technology like this because it makes your job very hard, sometimes dangerous and life-threatening. But, uh, you know, I really feel like this is something that people need to know uh, with uh, the way our world and our economy is going right now. You know, being able to secure your home could be a very important thing coming up very soon. So, uh, let me go ahead and finish this part and we'll come back on in a minute. Alright guys, I, I forgot about this. I wanted to share it with you. Um, this is another reason why you definitely want to do what I'm showing you. This is the screw that was in that strike plate. <laughs> How much do you think that little uh, half inch screw is going to hold? Not very much at all. Alright guys, so. I'm done now. I just wanted to show you the finished product. So there you are. There's the plate for the deadbolt lock. Got a T25 um, star framing screw in the top and the bottom. And the same thing down here on your strike plate. And if you're careful and drill these in, uh, per, you know, perfectly level, both you know, up and down, side to side. These will uh, seat down in there uh, on the base, and your door will still close fine as long as you get them in there straight. So, just to show you that, you know, the the deadbolt still works fine. Nothing's going to happen there. <clears throat> so you don't need to worry about that as long as you get them in there straight. So, again, guys, um, this is a way to make your door one heck of a lot stronger, one heck of a lot safer, 
uh, by doing it this way. And if you look around, there are also some safety products that you can get out there where these plates are a lot thicker, a lot heavier. And, you know, so it's actually like, you know, a chunk of uh, metal that goes in there. Obviously, you know, you'll need uh, a craftsman to put that in there because you're going to have to countersink it, cut out the wood behind it so that you can get it in there. But, uh, you know, if you, a good locksmith, typically, you know, they'll have high-end security products like that. But that's not what this video was intended. This was, you know, simple things that you can do yourself. And so that's exactly what we did. We just unscrewed four screws and screwed back in four more. And uh, one second here, and I'm, I'm going to get set up and I'm going to show you the other side of the door and the things you need to be concerned about on the other side. So one All right, sec. Guys, so what you're looking at here, this is the hinge side of the door. And you know, same principle here. You've got the exact same thing. You've got a trimmer board that's only like um, three quarters to an inch thick. And you've got screws that are screwed into it. And one sec, I still got my T25 bit in there. So let's change that out. And again, you know, this isn't a knock on the home builder or anything like this. This is, you know, the hardware that came with this. And uh, that screw was actually stripped out. But look how, look how short that is. That, that's not going to hold that door in place. So again, you know, you're doing the exact same thing. We're just going to put the T25 bit back in. And I'd say probably two of these and each one of these is going to be more than enough to get the job done. And you're, you're probably going to need more than just a, an electric screwdriver. They probably will not have enough torque, you know, to really drive these big framing screws home, so to speak. So, again, I'd say two of them on there. You're not going to hurt anything if you do four. I just, in my opinion, I think that's a little bit overkill. But why this is important, guys, is just like I was telling you, you know, that there's a clamshell kit that you can put around the locks that reinforces it. Typically on those, you're going to have a piece that shows on. You're going to have a piece that shows on both the inside and the outside. So if you walk up to this door from the outside and you see that clamshell reinforcement on the outside of the lock, you know that that has probably been beefed up and reinforced. So what a smart or trained person knows is that that side of the door probably is not the weak link. The hinge side of the door is probably the weak link at that point, and so they will attack it by trying to kick in this side of the door. And like I said, it's the same thing. All you've got to do is to get this door to crack, and once that molding in the door here, once you get that to crack, the rest will just go right along with it and basically all you do is you just kick it in from the other side and you know if you don't have you know some good deep screws that are screwed into the 2x4 studs behind there it's really easy to kick in the hinge side of the door as well well not really easy but it can definitely be done I'll tell you that so uh, guys thanks for joining us that's all I had to tell you today about uh, home safety and hopefully we'll have some more stuff going up in home safety at a later time if you have any questions uh, you know feel uh, feel free to ask I can't guarantee you I'll know you the an that I'll know the answer but I'll do what I can to help and thanks for joining us today at the Big Sky Tactical Channel God bless hey guys it's Fletch with the Big Sky Tactical Channel uh, I also wanted to talk a little bit today about your uh, garage door security. Uh, if the electricity goes out, most of the garage doors that are made nowadays, or at least in the area that I'm in, and I do understand the other construction changes from area to area, so it may not be the same everywhere, but uh, pretty much where I am at, you know, um, your garage door opener 
uh, is the only security that your garage door has on it. So if you pull on this handle, it dislodges the security for the whole door right there. And that's all you have right there. Uh, in my opinion, that's not a very, uh, very safe system. And I wouldn't trust that my, the security of my family to that. Because obviously if the power is out, the garage door is not going to open unless you disengage that and manually lift the door up and down. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but the, the only mounting, and let me see if this will be in the camera view. Okay, it is. Uh, <clears throat> right here, what it boils down to is the whole garage door rests on those two bolts right there. Yeah, there's actually three of them. There's uh, two curl and one black there. But if for any reason that gives out, that's the only security that your garage door has. And <clears throat> here in a minute, I'm going to show you a way that you can lock your garage door uh, very quickly, very easily, and in my opinion, it is a much more secure way to do it. Plus, it's also a way uh, that you can uh, also very quickly, in my opinion, get in and out. So bear with me one sec. Let me get the camera moved around, and I'll share that with you guys as well. All right, guys. So here is what I was going to show you. And basically what you're looking at here is this is the rail that my garage door slides in. And this is nothing more than a pair of price grips. But if you look just on the underneath side of those price grips, you can see that there's the caster wheel there for the door. So what you want to do with the price grips is set them so that they fit on there very taut, but not impossible to get off. And what that will do, if you put that pair of price grips right up against this caster wheel down here, <clears throat> with the door pushed all the way down, this door has nowhere to go. And it's important that you have the door pushed all the way down so there's no wiggle room. Because if there's wiggle room where someone can, you know, force your door to go up and down, then they could possibly get enough movement to, you know, to wiggle it back and forth enough to where it'll, it'll come off of there. But if you put one of those on both sides of the track on your garage door, it's going to be extremely difficult for someone to break into your garage. And uh, in my opinion, this is a lot more secure. I would use all three. I would put these on there and then, you know, if you wanted to use the the catch mechanism that allows the manual override to manually open and close your door you could do that as well but I wouldn't trust just that and then when you want to take this off all you got to do is just pull on it like that and the release and it'll pop off and so it only takes a few seconds and if you'll bear with me here a sec let me pick them back up and then to put it back on it's the same thing just in reverse get it in place now trying to do this one handed and it's that simple so it just pops in and out right there and uh, if, you, uh, if you don't think this works try it disengage your door and set it up this way and then go outside and of course you know don't tear up your garage door or anything but uh, it, you're going to have a very hard time getting the garage door open if you've got it set up this way. So there you go, there's another uh, safety uh, tip for your garage door in order to keep it safe and still be able to use it in a SHTF or uh, WROL situation. So, But again, you can put that on both sides. And what I was talking about earlier, which is the difference between the newer garage door openers and the older ones, in the olden days, about waist high or so, you would actually have a locking mechanism like right here and there would be a deadbolt shaft that went through the rail and that would be your locking mechanism and so you know it would turn and then it would do a deadbolt lock and that would be on both sides of your garage door and you know most of them now have pretty well completely gone away with that and they just have the system like that up there where you just pull that manual release 
<clears throat> that disengages the drive from the garage door opener and once that drive from the garage door opener uh, <clears throat> is disengaged it'll allow that slider up there to go back and forth on the beam and then of course those springs up there are what helps lift the, the door back and forth then those springs are under load so if you don't already know it you don't ever want to mess with those it's it's a pretty tricky situation a lot of times getting those set up so that your garage door will open you know not too hard not too easy so but there you go guys hope that helps someone out there